This is a Hipsters of the Coast podcast. This Doom Travelers podcast is brought to you by Hipsters of the Coast, your destination for magic news, strategy, and entertainment. And by Cast Haven, where you can build your magic collection like a pro. Visit casthaven.com for more information. All right, welcome to episode nine of Doom Travelers, uh, where we play Destiny and talk about magic. This week we're going to, or this episode, we're going to be talking about From the Vault, uh, recently announced From the Vault Angels uh, will be upon us this fall. From the Vault is an annual box set that Wizards produces uh, for reasons that are very peculiar uh, to a very small target set. Uh, and we're going to talk about why that is and what we could do to make it a better product. Uh, joining me for this episode uh, is a team of expert guardians. Uh, and we'll start uh, for, on my left with Matt Grizzle Grizzle Guido. Uh, Matt, if you could get something rare and unique and flashy, uh, like a From the Vault card, but for your Destiny character so that you can run around looking good in the Crucible, uh, what would it be? Uh, I kind of like the idea that somebody sort of mentioned this, I don't know, of decals in, that worked also like shaders that you could put over your armor, like a sweet dragon or crest like uh, the Iron Banner guy has. Nice, nice, some kind of rare... Also, I'm super envious of Dave's uh, Dead Orbit shader. I've been after it for a long time. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet one. So Dave, Dave McNasty McCoy over here, sitting on the couch across from me, you've got the sweet dead orbit shader that everybody wants, but if you could have anything else uh, that would make you look even more unique and special uh, and collectible, perhaps, uh, what would it be? I think a uh, finer control over your color scheme is definitely, like, that's the most obvious way so, so what colors would you want to be if you had if you had finer control over your colors? Well, honestly, I I would probably change it pretty frequently, uh, based on what I was doing. Gotcha. I don't know, it's just the you know the most customizable part of the character. The the artist inside you yearning to express yeah. themselves. Uh, speaking of artists, we're joined by Matt the Obliterator Jones. Uh, Matt, what kind of crazy unique rare collectible shiny fancy weird thing would you want for your titan i would like on my uh on my belt i would like to have a lightsaber built so that i could then use a lightsaber during the game because that would fucking rule that would be sweet how cool would it be if shoulder charge if you could replace the visual for shoulder charge with just a lightsaber swipe Oh my god, if I could lightsaber you idiots, that would be the best thing ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> and last but not least, over here to my right, sitting on the map, is uh, Rob Proposal Culpits. Rob, what would you do to make your character look unique and special so that everyone was jealous? I think it would be either the colors or pets. There definitely should be pets in this game. Ooh. Oh, like, cat check. Cat check. My, you know, like... my foster cat is sleeping next to me. And I woke her up. <laughs> oh, just we heard her. Yeah, that's crazy. You said her name and she spoke. So she knows her name is Foster Cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, pets would be pets would be great in the game. I think personally, and it's I'm glad that Matt just sent us into orbit, because I think the ships in the game need to be more customizable. Right now I'm using my boring uh, white vault of glass ship, but I would love some kind of really just the ability to create more unique ships on your own and customize them with uh, like special flair, like kind of like the decal idea that uh, Matt Guido was talking about, but being able to stick that on your ship uh, I think would be fantastic. I don't think I actually answered your question, Rich, but it'd be pretty sweet if uh, you could put, like, the number of times you, like, kill Crota or kill Atheon, like, a little sticker on your ship. Oh, like the football helmet stickers. Exactly. That'd be awesome. That's exactly what I was thinking. That'd be or pretty bomber. sweet. Do they kill people in football? 
they do. Ape Young's <laughs> died many times in football games. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so we're going to hop in the Iron Banner here for a couple of rounds of crazy PvP action. Uh, but we're going to talk about... Today. Yeah, what did you learn today? Our opponents are all single except for one team of two. Let's ask them out on a date if they're all single. Uh -huh. Oh, man. Oh, man. If Too you know much. If you hit roster and you look who's in the game, the black bars will tell you who's in the party. Oh, really? Oh. I just learned that today. I had no idea. Yeah, no That's idea. That's what those guys we were playing That's with crazy. Them. Crazy. Anyways. Uh, so that is your oh, destiny. The black bar on the side. That is your destiny tip for t the day, home listeners slash viewers. That's amazing. Uh, the black bar on the side shows parties. Of course, we're in a pretty big party here. Have a hopefully a slight advantage because of that. Uh, but we'll be talking Did you call about it magic. A pasta party. Y yeah. Oh yeah. I would I would call it Matt Guida's pasta party. Oh, in fact. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Bravo team. So anyways, <laughs> talking let's, I want to talk about Wizards of the Coast pasta party or uh yo don't take C. All right, don't take C. Nope. What? A and B, only take A and B. Okay. Hang on. Well, from the vault. Yes, from the vault. Uh, from the Vault is an annual set that comes out and has a ton of special foily cards in it. Um, it is usually uh, very expensive to acquire and causes many people to wonder why. Why, why, why? What is going on here? Um, so From the Vault this year is going to be about angels. Um, Let's get right off the bat. Uh, Matt, are you excited for angels in your From the Vault? Matt, Matt Jones? Or Matt Jones. Jones. Sorry, Matt Jones. Matt Jones, are you excited for angels? I have never bought a From the Vault. I do not so care about angels lost. in Magic the Gathering. I'd actually so say that they're my least favorite creature type. So Enemy I will continue to feet. ignore From the Vault angels as I've ignored all previous From the Vault releases. Yes, I would like to say the same thing. Oh man, so you guys really are just not into the whole From the Vault thing. Well, okay, here's the thing. First, like, they're... they're... I'm a tournament player, so... Zone B. You know, unless you're giving me cards that I can't really get from Legacy, which they have done before, but you know, I can acquire outside of buying the set, um, they can't keep doing that forever, you know? That's very true. Yeah. They cannot I'm definitely keep not the target audience for for Wait. any of the from the vaults either. But who is really right? Right, the that's the question. EDA player. The so in in know. theory, it's collectors, right? But so 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 that's the that's the problem, right? Is is nobody and and you know I'm kind of leading the witnesses here, but nobody really understands this product. Um, you have a bunch of supplemental products throughout the year, and I think for the most part, people get it, right? So the dual decks. The dual decks are a very simple product that people understand. Uh, they are an introductory product. You get two pre-constructed decks. You jam them against each other, uh, jam them against some other ones, mix and match, have a good time. Uh, the, it's a very straightforward product, and I think it's very clear who the audience is for that product. Would anyone disagree with that? Nope. Got it. So, uh, moving on from that product, you have your supplemental products, which are your things like um, Modern Masters or Conspiracy. I don't think there's any confusion about why they're printing Modern Masters. Uh, it's obvious that Modern as a format needs support, and Modern Masters is a great way to do it. Um, and the target audience is people who A, love to draft, uh, or B, uh, want modern cards. Um, so then, uh, set like Conspiracy, also for people who like multiplayer, uh, or for people who uh, just, you know, like casual formats. 
Um, but then we get to From the Vault. Uh, what is going on with this okay. set? Nobody knows. Um, we know how they're selling. I mean, somebody must they, be buying it for them. So, so From the Vault sells extremely well. Um, it almost really? always, yeah. Up until Annihilation, I would say all the From the Vaults tend to uh, almost completely sell out, in fact. And well, here's Annihilation the was a super big mistake. And, and yeah. here's, here's the thing, it was. Uh, but here's the thing about From the Vault. Um, and the reason why From the Vault exists in the first place, uh, From the Vault is a gift. Uh, it is a gift from Wizards of the Coast to its retailers. Um, and that gift is in the form of a box okay. of cards that retails for $35, meaning that your local store okay. probably paid $25 to get it. And thanks to the rarity and secondary collector's market of that set, they can turn around and sell it for something like $100. So... Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I it just is, noticed something. Yeah, Brendan yeah. Masters Josh, is is in this. Yeah, Josh is yeah. in this. Yeah. <laughs> Josh. Uh, it. Oh Josh really? Oh wow! Yeah. That, is. that is hilarious. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Any? Anyway. Yeah, I, I think that's really that's cute. a. Uh, I think that's an excellent point, Rich. The why. I think it goes a long way in, into explaining exactly what um, business factors involved are involved in the creation oh. from the vault. From the vault is just a subsidy, basically a subsidy for uh, uh, card retailers. They can buy right. it cheap and sell it really uh, for a much more inflated price system, a more guaranteed way of supporting their price. But, um, but, but I mean, that still begs the question, like. Why? Why Somebody choose that form of, of a way to, to, to support your card stores? I, I don't know. That seems like a, such a strange, obtuse, roundabout way Maybe to give you card stores a oh, very profitable product me. to sell. <laughs> what a jerk! Yeah. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah, it's um, that is uh, I think one of the big problems is that because that that's not an obvious thing. Um, it makes it difficult for people to really understand that that's what's going on here. You know, it reminds uh, me of how the judges get paid at GPs. Yes. They used to get paid. Don't they get paid with cards still? Uh, nope, they, they do not. Uh, well, they sort of do. Indirectly. Um by tournament organizers at GPs and big tournaments now. Yes, they do. They used, but they used to get paid by wizards uh, in the right. form uh, in the form of promo cards. Um, so, uh, yes, foils. Fo foils that were worth quite a bit of money. Um, foils that are that were worth a lot more money than what generally what comes in the from the vault set. That is for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was it was it was a way of wizards printing its own money to pay employees that weren't its employees. Right, and that's exactly what from the vault is. Uh, it's another way for wizards to print money. Um, wizards already has a lot of ways to print money, but specifically, they're printing money that they know is going to uh, turn around very quickly, uh, and it's almost a guaranteed. Uh, way for wizards to reward uh, tournament organizers. What they, uh, sorry, what stores. What they put in this set, though, that's gonna make the, this one worth, you know, a hundred plus dollars. Oh well, I mean, getting on the topic of angels, if they want it to be a hundred dollars, they just gotta put uh, Iona in there, right? Because she's a hundred dollars foiled. Um, so she would Linvala, be like fifty. Uh, sorry, Linvala, Linvala, Iona, the first Avison. Um, those easily could bring the price up to a hundred. Uh, you could throw in some things like Exalted Angel and Radiant Archangel, which were uh, only available as foils a very long time ago, so very few people have them. Um, see, like you see, once you start talking about stuff like this, I don't even. I don't you even right, right, and 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 it's exactly so. The majority of players just don't care, um, and one of the 
uh, most prevalent complaints, uh, and I, one of the most prevalent complaints is that it just doesn't target a large amount of the audience, and it's a waste of Wizards' time and effort uh, to put this together every year. Um, when they could be developing products that are more useful, uh, you know, because Wizards Wizards uses from the vault sometimes to reprint uh, cards from Portal, um, which is a really strange thing. Um, Burn and Burning of Jinye, uh was one of these cards. Thunder uh, Thunder Dragon, uh, I think that's not the exact name, but uh, was it was also one of these cards. Wizards is using. Um, from the vault to serve a purpose that really ought to be served by the commander supplemental sets, uh, which is one I completely forgot to mention earlier. Also has a very clear target audience. Um, but I think more to the point, uh, so what we have is a product that Wizards is using to essentially gift money to retailers. Um, and it's not resonating very well with the community. Um, it's clearly sells well, uh, cause it's very expensive to get some of these box sets, um, because they're such short printed, but it really seems to only be targeting high end collectors. Um, and now what we have this year is from the vault angels, which is incredibly ironic to me, uh, because once we've established that most of the community does not resonate with this set and it really only targets high end collectors. And its purpose is to give a gift to the retail stores. It becomes a little weird because none of that is going to target people who like angels. People who like angels tend to be younger collectors. They tend to have uh, an interest in uh, casual cards. Um, pretty much uh, none of the things uh, that would be the target audience for From the Vault. So what is it they're trying to do here? If they're, you know, like, I, I just feel like this set more than any other From the Vault is going to completely miss the mark. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think that that's something... Well, I think uh, that touches on what I said earlier. Though, like, eventually, they're going to run out of cool stuff to reprint alternate art versions of that people are going to be willing to pay... Zone B, X, whatever it plus dollars. Zone well, C, when not it necessarily yeah. because because I think I think the the thing that that you're we we're missing like we keep saying this is for collectors and that's true like this is one of the few purely collectible items that Wizards releases like Wizards products are meant to be played with Magic rules you know like their Commander decks their dual decks their sets. There are reprint sets like Modern Masters, you know, like these these are cards that are meant to be played in the form that they're sold. But the judge foils weren't like that. Uh, the from the fault the vaults aren't like that at all. Um, the San Diego Comic Con uh, Planeswalkers aren't like that at all. I think I, I think those three items or or categories of items are all related because they're purely collectible. They aren't meant to be played in the form that they're sold, and they're just meant to be a limited quantity of a unique looking item. That's that's all it's supposed to be. And However, that's why it, it, it rarely that. makes sense to a lot of people because they're, that's just not Wizards MO. That the vast majority of their products aren't like that at all. That's why it doesn't really fit into any of our conceptions of what a magic product is. So so to serve this purpose, which is to kind of print more money, Wizards, uh, it's clearly something they feel uh, they need to do. Uh, is there a way for them to do that, uh, but also, uh, you know, create a product that resonates with people? Uh, given they've tried that once before um, with Commander's Arsenal, um, I think, and that was a pretty big failure. Uh, uh, what do you guys think? Matt Jones, do you think it's possible to create a highly priced product but have it resonate with a large amount of the community? I think so for sure. I think that they have to reevaluate the usability of the cards that they print. Um, like, I'm a big uh, fan of alternate art, full art, things like that. And um, 
I couldn't. I, I really liked the new Dryad Arbors. And I couldn't play with the Dryad Arbors because I could cut to them directly in my in my bottle deck. I could just double sleeve, foil? instantly cut to this. Not, it's not even just that it's foil; it's that it's that specific kind of foil. They just curve, and it's, it's almost impossible to get them totally flat and use them. Um, and that you sucks. See, that, 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 that same perspective, though. Because I hate foils too, because I'm a tournament player. Yeah, I don't just hate. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would totally prefer that the alternate art dryad arbor was not a foil, because I just like the art better and the card design better on it. Um, be secure. But since the only way I can get it is in a foil, I would take it as a foil <laughs> if I could still use it in my deck. This like, you just need to make the cards playable. Is all. Like, I love the alternate art. I love. I love all that stuff. I really hate that I can't use it. Yeah, I mean, that's a I great mean, point. I, I honestly don't think these cards are meant to be playable. I really don't. I don't I don't think the judge foils or... But it, like, the, says it right on the thing. That, you know, I like, mean, they can be played, the but, I, but they're, not, they're not printed as being playable cards. Right, it's, it's like, not the not purpose. Definitely no, not. They're, they're meant to go sit in a shelf or someone's binder to be shown off. Like that's what they are, and and it's so weird that Wizards does that because that's like oh, that's the antithesis of of the of what makes Magic Magic. Magic is a game that you can collect, but that you can also play with every every piece that you collect. Like that's definitely part of what made Magic so successful at the beginning, because uh, it could do both of those things simultaneously. And the problem with From the Vault is it's purely meant to be a collectible like they don't make the cards playable because they curve way too easily and yeah. they, they just can't be fairly used in a deck um, and I I think that's your your favorite alternate art uh, Dryad Arbor I think also supports this point like that's probably one of my least favorite alternate oh arts God, ever because you can't <laughs> tell it apart from a forest oh, it looks exactly yeah, like a forest and the oh, reason see, why like they did that, that it's like cool that. It's cool that it looks exactly like a forest, but it's unplayable because it's completely unfair. It's misinformation for your opponent. It's so easy to hide that information. And uh, and I think the reason they felt comfortable doing that is because it was from the vault. It was a collectible item. Not behind you. A, uh, it wasn't a, a tournament play. It wasn't intended to be a widely played tournament card. Yeah. No, makes Heavy sense. ammo available. Zone A lost. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. I mean, you know, they are technically magic cards, so they will they will get played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and that's definitely a concern, right? Is that uh, they're going to see some play? Uh, but what can you do? As long as they don't like reprint from the vault, Armadoy. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's. I mean, it's a bit. But but that's the thing is. I don't want it to keep being a product nobody cares about, right? Um, if you really want to give a gift to the stores, you should be able to do that just by making magic cards, right? Because, uh, like Dave said, um, people want to play magic uh, with their cards. So why aren't we? Why aren't we creating a product? Why isn't there a product uh, that we can play magic with? Um, and also can be a very high-end collectible item, and it's it's hard to reconcile those things. Um, does it would it have to be something like from the vault Shocklands? Um, I mean, I think you just create. Like, I, I think Wizards is operating on a tier of like their collectible tier is all one tier. It's expensive tier. All the like their all their specifically collectible cards are all inexpensive sets. The San Diego Planeswalkers, uh, the From the Vault cards, the Judge Foils, all of those are extremely expensive collectible items. Like, what they what they could do is create a different, um, and, and they kind of have created this different uh, you know, zone or, or, or tier of collectibles with the uh, GP promos. Uh, those are alternate art and widely available, free, quote unquote free, for some people who go to a GP. And um, and those generally don't aren't more ex more expensive than their regular art counterparts. Um, I, I think that is closer to the approach they should be taking for more promotional 
uh, collectible material. Uh, rather than just making a box set that is so easy to sell for such a high price. So final final thought, because uh, we want to wrap this discussion up. Uh, would you keep From the Vault around as a product and just let it remain as it is? Or do you think we should get rid of it and divert Wizards resources elsewhere? Dave. Uh, I think if you're going to keep it as a way to support stores, it's always going to be expensive. And so they should have a different tier of collectibles where they, you can sell cheaper um, than the From the Vault. I don't think the From the Vault fills the casual collectible uh, yes. Matt Matt Jones I would um, I would I would reprint I would have a new type of collectible where it should be called something from the from the recent past or something so they'd have to come up with that that's their job they would pay um, and you would reprint cards from today, since the modern border, in the old border. And you would do sets like that all the time. And they would, none of them would be allowed to be foil. And it would just be awesome. I like it. Matt Dido. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Right? I mean, if, <laughs> if they're making money and people buy it, and like whoever this product is made for, these people like it, whatever, I don't really care. Like this thing is so far yeah. away from affecting me. Like, so, if, so there's a, if there's an audience that enjoys the product, I, you know, whatever. I don't really care. So, so how, Rob, how I, I, I want to get Rob's opinion because we haven't we haven't been able to really include him in this discussion because I think it's something uh, that he hasn't had a lot of interaction with. Uh, but now that you've listened to us all discuss the various ins and outs, and I think our general negativity over the from the vault set. Uh, what's your kind of takeaway <clears throat> from all this? I don't know. I guess there should be... It sounds to me like you can't avoid magic being part collectible and part functional since you're already paying a lot of money a lot of times for functional cards. So it doesn't strike me as like a violation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good point. So you think the the fact that it targets a very small audience is in line with the general fact that Magic's already an expensive game to play and that cards are just, there are cards at that tier um, versus what Dave's been talking about, which is the playability and, and Matt also. Um, that sometimes the playability isn't really what's key here. It's really just about printing collectible cards in a collectible card game. Yeah. Well, I don't think From the Vault's going anywhere. Uh, everyone who it matters for seems to be pretty happy with the product. So uh, it's definitely here to stay. And uh, I do think there's going to be a lot more grief over this one than there has been over others in the past. But uh, I, would, it's, I would imagine uh, on the list of things that Wizards could fix uh, that this one isn't very high anyways. So that's that. And uh, that is all for our romp in the Iron Banner tonight. Thanks for joining us. And uh, as soon as I remember how to turn this thing off, uh, we'll be done here. Hey, Guardians. Thanks for tuning in to the Doom Travelers podcast. You can find more at doomtravelers.com, or you can follow at Doom Travelers on Twitter and subscribe to Hipsters TV on YouTube for more Doom Travelers than you can handle. Thanks to Robert Colpitz and Matt Guido for joining us in the Crucible this week. Playing Iron Banner with you guys was fun while it lasted. For my co-hosts, Rich Stein and Matt the Obliterator Jones, I'm David Bones McCoy. See you next time. Now then, Pat, William Howard, too.